uh, his primary motivation for the partner is is uh, looks, and then that will be problem problematic for him in the future. So as we said earlier, a relationship should be based, or how you choose someone should be based on the understanding of what is the purpose and objective of marriage. So that's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, uh, or the understanding of a hadith where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that we marry for four reasons. Because of looks, uh, because of a lineage, because of wealth, and also because of religion. What Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying is that these are the main reasons that usually why people are attracted to someone because of the beauty, because of lineage, because of wealth, and also because of religion. So, what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is uh, saying is that you should falsfar bidati din taribat yadak. You will be successful if you choose the one with uh, religion. But we have to go further into what is meant by someone who has religion, uh, which we will go about soon uh, in mentioning about what are the characteristics of someone that uh, should be, of, of someone that we want to choose as a life partner. We mentioned also before uh, the problem with someone choosing a partner because of infatuation or lust is that uh, this is problematic because it may lead someone to cheat in the future if he does not take care of himself properly. Because in Singapore, according to statistics a few years ago, uh, not the latest, but a few years ago, one of the top uh, or the first reason, the top reason for divorce is cheating. To cheat or to be uh, to, to see someone else or to make love with someone else besides infidelity is the main reason, the top reason for, for divorces for the past few years. So this has is related to what we mentioned about love and also infatuation. As said by a wise person, desire is a fire that eats away decency in which alone resides dignity. And we go on towards sharing about what are the characteristics that one should seek in someone. As we shared earlier also about religion, what it means by we choose someone who has religion. It is definitely not someone who only has the appearance of having religion. That is not how we judge uh, someone's religion. It is not merely what he looks like. It is not merely how he sounds like. He peppers his speech with verses from the Quran. He peppers his speech with mentioning uh, hadith uh, narrations from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but, but someone with a proper religious understanding and proper practice of Islam. So that means one of the uh, important part of proper religious understanding is that uh, he knows what Islam is about. It is not about a lack of knowledge. Because people have different, different backgrounds and that may lead to him having lack of knowledge. But uh, the opposite is someone who has a disregard towards religion. That is the, uh, uh, one of the things that we do not want in a partner. People who have good regard of Islam, he strives to practice Islam but he fails at certain points and that is still okay. As compared to someone that his religion as something problematic. He sees religion as something that uh, should not be practiced or he sees, he understands religion as something that is not in, 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 a, in a different way that is practiced or someone from a different sect. For example, that may affect 
their uh, practice of Islam in the in the future. But it works both ways because uh, someone may outwardly look like someone who is not religious, but he can be more religious, more filial, and more pious than someone who looks what we say, looks religious. Looks religious does not necessarily mean that he is religious. Uh, but someone who does not look religious can be more religious than someone who looks, who looks religious. There may be uh, people who are lacking of Islamic knowledge, but that is still okay if he tries and strives to practice and he goes and learns about Islam this, uh, as compared to someone who has Islam but does not bother to pray. There is a difference between someone who has lack of, lack of knowledge in Islam, but he goes to study and he tries to practice it and he fails and stumbles from time to time. That is normal, expected from any human being. But someone who totally says, I don't want to do salat and gives many reasons to not wanting to practice religion or have an improper understanding or deviant understanding of what Islam is or he says that uh, uh, deviant understanding for example he says that uh, there is a prophet or from the Ahmadiyya or Qadiyani sect he says that there is another prophet after prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is deviant already out of Islam and people from a different denomination that does not necessarily is the deciding factor but why is that problematic is because in the future their daily practice between he himself and his relationship with his wife and his wife already has norms and practices how her family practice religion that may cause friction in the in their future so there is another guideline in islam about choosing a partner is what is called as uh, malay we call it sakufu or kafa someone or, or, or is something that that means that to be similar in stature in different aspects so from the same denomination or in singapore alhamdulillah we don't have uh, that but in other countries uh, even between muslims they have uh, political loyalty to different groups that can be a problem because uh, it happens that if the husband is from a different uh, uh, political uh, party and the wife is from an opposing political party and it happens in other countries, not in Singapore, other countries where they fight because of their ideals, they fight because of their support from the different political parties. So it's important to choose a similar, to choose similar, um, uh, have similarities in different aspects of their lives. So for example, it is not wrong. Contrary to what sometimes people say that, uh, you know, someone who is poor can marry someone who is rich, is rich. Of course, there is no problem with that. But Islam's guideline is that to be similar in stature and things like that, something that helps them in their future because it is least uh, possible to cause friction in the future. Because it makes things easy when they share the same backgrounds. It makes things easy when they share same denomination of practice of religion. It is easy when, when they are uh, of the same understanding of Islam. And also, proper religious understanding means that uh, he strives also to always practice and better his, his religion. From different practices for example if the wife is belonging to a family that practices tahlil or reading the yasin together as a family and then the husband is someone uh, from the understanding that uh, tahlil is haram yasin is haram on to be pre to be read only on certain nights well it is not a problem for for them to marry but it may cause problems in the future. So when the wife's family, for example, wants to do certain practices, and the husband says, you are my wife, I forbid you to go there. I forbid you to go there, and that will cause problems and also friction in the future. So the objective of uh, the idea 
or the guideline Islam of having similar backgrounds or similar stature is that uh, this helps to, to minimize the friction between two partners. Because we understand, even from people who have similar backgrounds, they will have uh, difficulties assimilating and living with each other. Allah SWT created men and women different. Men are like this, men like this, and women like certain things, and, and we have different backgrounds. Sometimes uh, the man wants to do things like this, and the woman wants to do things like this. Uh, this one likes shopping, this one does not shopping, this one likes to go on holidays, this one does not. You know, people even from the same background, or even classmates from school, they can uh, have problems in the future. What more people from really, really diverse backgrounds, uh, that will be something that needs more work rather than people who are uh, required to have less and, uh, of an effort. So another uh, key characteristic or attribute that we want in a partner that one should, should make it uh, uh, a characteristic that he looks for is for someone who has to be appeasing and uh, suitable for him. That means that, uh, for example, sometimes young people nowadays, they have this idea that a uh, woman has to be like this, like this, like this. Because they are already stuck with uh, the society's perception that woman has to be like this. So his identification of what a beautiful woman is, is she looks like a model, in a magazine or she looks like a model uh, uh, in, a, in a newspaper, that woman has to be like this, like this, like this. But in the reality, uh, that is really, really not, not true. So basically the guideline is someone that is appeasing. If you look at her, then it is okay. Someone uh, does not cause you to turn away, then it is considered as okay. Because we have to be clear, for, uh, especially for people who are not not yet married or have yet to choose a partner and also people are already married they have to realize that it's not fair to say that a partner has to remain like this like this like this because it is only natural for someone uh, people to gain weight in the future because to have expectations of what is the society's expression today of what woman has to be that is problematic because as a general guideline for us, not just Muslims, but anyone who gets, uh, who wants to get married. Oh, and what I always advise is that uh, have no expectations and expect the unexpected. Because when you have expectations of your partner, especially regarding the physical part, and then that will be difficult. Because you have already enough problems with other aspects of your life, a characteristic, character, uh, but but to emphasize on looks, because that will be problematic in the future, because looks change. You can have an accident, Billah. you can have sickness, Billah. Uh, uh, things, things can happen. So as long as the character, uh, the physical shape, the physical form, what he or she looks like is appeasing, and then that is okay. Another characteristic uh, that should be uh, it's somewhat related to uh, common sense and maturity and being responsible. So when, when I say about characteristics in choosing a spouse, how do we assess this? Uh, this is an important point. As I said, uh, there is, as Muslims, we have to have a certain way of understanding things. Sometimes we practice certain things, but we don't realize that this idea that we practice is opposite to what Islam teaches, or uh, is contrary to the teachings of Islam. For example, there is the notion that uh, to get married with someone, it helps that you date him first. Date. To get to know one another, to go out first, to date for a few months, and if you like, then proceed to the next step. And then only then, after that, you decide to get, to get married. The reality is that there is no statistic to prove that people who date his partner first before they get married, or people who date before they get married, their marriages last longer than people who do not meet each other before, before marriage. There is really no difference. People, there are people who know one another or has been dating for 10 years and they get married and they divorce immediately after, 
after marriage. It happens. There are people who have not known one another before marriage and they know only one month before, for example, and then their marriage can last a lifetime. Most of our parents are like that. Or a lot of our parents from the previous generation, they are like that. But their marriages last happily ever after. Now marriages, uh, the rate is really high, so it is not really a factor uh, in, in uh, uh, or to justify to go on dates and to know one another intimately before marriage because it causes more problems than alleviates problems. And also, uh, so before we go to the, to the, to the following uh, attributes, we end today uh, with, we mentioned about uh, how to choose a spouse. So how do you, you look at uh, the things that we list down here? Uh, how to go about choosing a spouse is that uh, it is someone somewhat similar to interviewing a job applicant. Uh, so, as with a job interview, we have to bring a resume and tell our background, our work is like this, uh, I am like this, I have this and that. And the parents play a part also. The parents of the, the parents or the guardian of someone that is uh, to be wed, he has to be particular. And that is a problem nowadays because youth today or young people nowadays tends to have the idea that I know more than you. It is not you who is getting married to him. But uh, as I said, as a, uh, we humans are not independent of each other. We depend on each other, especially our family. So the family plays a big part in actually in choosing a spouse, especially parents and, and direct guardians of someone. So when you interview, you realize that uh, the purpose of this is to make sure that the person that you want to take can fulfill his responsibility and knows the objective, knows the vision and mission of the company, and, and knows what to do, and has the, has the proper character, and has the requirements required to join the company. So the same thing is that the parents uh, has to, 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 to know certain things about the husband. So, for example, if you are a parent, you want to interview someone who wants to wed your daughter, please be very particular and stringent and ask personal questions a lot. It is wrong to say that, oh, this is personal just between. No, you have to, because uh, in Islam, for example, if you have uh, a very clear example, for example, if you have problems in the bedroom or in having relations, marital relations, then you have to declare that before marriage. Because it is not fair to get married with someone and you know that after marriage, you cannot consummate your, your relationship. Because he has a, a physical problem. He needs to deal with it first. It is uh, not correct also to say that, oh, it is unfair to him. No, it's not unfair to him. It's unfair to the person that he's going to get married to. Because they have certain expectations of what, we have certain expectations and requirements in, in uh, what a marriage is, is to be like. And it is your choice. Uh, so, uh, this is basically what the idea is in choosing a partner and how to choose a, a partner. Inshallah, next week we will continue more on uh, choosing a, a partner. I'm going to explain more about asking the right questions from uh, someone that is going to wed your daughter or son. Inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum wa astaghfirullah min qawlin bila amalin subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.